Cool, and welcome to my late rendition of Coin Monday. Really sorry, it's late. As you can see from the house, like we're we're packing up shit, and I haven't really had time to put out the content, nor the capability to put out the quality that I would like. So I've kind of been holding off from it. I did pre-record some videos the other day that I haven't put up yet due to being so rushed off my feet. It's been an absolutely crazy month for me in terms of. Not only upheaval, sales have been crazy. I've had a lot going on outside of the coin business. I've also had a lot going on in life in general. So for today's Coin Monday, I am actually going to uh, talk about kilo bars. Not coins, however, I think there's a there's a lot of information that people can, can glean from this video. So I love Umacore bars. Personally, everyone's got their own individual taste. Some people like Metal Ore, some people like Sheffield Silver. I'm not a huge fan of them. I own a couple of them. They were cheap at the time. Um, Silver's currently lost its value, which is not great. But I stack kilo bars with me. I, they're not for resale. They're, they're purely so I can stack it. Coins are for sale. The kilos are for me. So I try and keep it uniform. I have... Umacor, and the reason I like Umacor because it, it it makes me feel like a dealer. Like the first time I actually felt like a, a proper dealer was when I had three of them, and I was stacking them up, and it was amazing. Um, small things, eh? So yeah, I've got one, two, three, four. Now this one's a bit special. Like it's. It's actually stamped with the Andorran 30 Dinars, 2012. These are a bit of a crossover, and I think they were being made to uh, essentially bypass tax rules because in Europe, there's a certain tax law that if it's a coin, then they've got it's got special tax privileges, and if it's a bar, it doesn't. So the term coin bar... It's not a coin in any way, shape, or form. Although, if you were to go to um, parts of Asia, they actually had, uh, especially Japan, they they weren't like bars, but they had little metal things that weren't traditionally coins, but they were used as money, so they performed the same function. But yeah, I I really like kilo bars. I'm not a fan of smaller bars. There's a lot of people that do like them, and it's getting more and more popular. For example, the Perf Mint, they have recently bought out a one-ounce dragon design with a dollar denomination stamped on it. Fantastic. I may even get some of them in. I was thinking of getting a monster box, which I think is I think it's 200 bars. That's, that's not a big monster box. Like When you consider a monster box, you're looking at 500 coins. But I digress. Like, I, I think that for the killer bars, they're great because it's a pure silver play. It's not like, for example, with with smaller denominations, you get like the collectability side of it, and then you have the premiums. With this, it's literally get it in for as cheap as you can, and wait for the spot price to move. It has gone against me. I'm slightly over on these. I don't buy them for a quick profit though. So I'm wanting to have these until the next crash, when I believe that silver will go through the roof. It may not go for the roof, I may be wrong. It may just dwindle to nothing. It would just have this intrinsic value of silver and everyone's like and everyone will be like, No, we don't want it, it's it's rubbish. Like we're gonna trade in I don't know, guns if you're American or maybe we I don't even know what we trade in the UK. Copper pennies? Can't trade trade food. I, I don't particularly want to go down the Armageddon route. It's I think those people are Tim Fall hat, I think they're a bit without trying to alienate anyone. I think they're a bit OTT. It's a bit delusional to think that the world's going to come to an end. I can understand the wartime. I, I get that, but we're not going through Armageddon anytime soon. It's it's not going to happen. Not in my lifetime, anyway. And I will happily eat my hat that I wear a lot if it did happen. So yeah, I'm putting it out there. Come on, world, come at me. <laughs> See what you got. <laughs> So yeah, kilo bars. I like them because you can literally just stack them, put them in the corner, put them in the safe, whatever, just stack them up. Month in, month out. 
Um, I'm hoping to end up with maybe 20 of these. I don't think I'd go to more than 20. It's I. They're not good for making money. Um, as a dealer, they are very bad unless you've got a really really good source because of the way that the VAT goes on them and because you can't get them in Europe without the tax benefit unless it's a coin bar which are few and far between and the dealers pay up to that as well in Europe like they all put the price up slightly more it's it's not beneficial for me to stack these so I only pick these up when they are a fantastic deal and I really like Umacor I, I took the Sheffield ones because they were there and they were cheap and I, I got a trade but I'm only really stacking the Umicore because they make me feel like a badass. So, just look at how thick that is. So, people said to me, like, aren't you worried that someone's going to fake the silver? And I'm like, no, not really. Um, I can't see it. Like, you tend to hear gold wires being faked, uh, not silver. So... Plus, you can test it. You, uh, I never do the measurement thing. I, I don't even do the the magnet test on most things unless it looks off. Like most coins, you can look at it and you will know if it's fake or not just by looking at it. Especially with governmental stuff. Like I've said before, I don't really touch the non-governmental coins. I heard of a story recently, though, or maybe about six months ago, where a mint in America was actually putting in... They were saying it was uh, one troy ounce fine, 999, and that wasn't the case. It was, the metal content was actually lower, but I'm not in a position to buy one of these, uh, I'm not in a position to buy an XRF machine. They are ridiculously expensive. Like I have a friend who is in, he's in the jewelry, jewelry, jewelry trade, and... <laughs> If I needed something tested, I could I could send to him, but he was telling me they're like forty thousand pound and up, and I'm going to take his, his word for it. Like it's this is his business. He he literally I just buy and buy and sell coin where he is really really skilled, and he's actually making me something which I'll probably show very soon. So yeah, this is my my late coin Monday. These bars are great. I do love these bars. Um, I can actually show you. I'll show you another bar. So, it's very rare that I have this much stock on me. It's purely because I'm moving the house. So, so this is a Sheffield bar. So you've got the the stamp of Sheffield, assay office, 999, company. So, CML, I think these went out of business. I I don't know, I don't really see new ones around much these days. So I, I'm pretty sure they did go out of business. But it's crazy, like in the UK, you're gonna be paying uh, spot plus costs of making it plus Plus VAT, and it's it's steep. Like why why would you choose to stack these types of bars when it's a pure play on silver as well? You, it's stupid. You'd be a moron to do it. Like unless you're some vintage bar collector where it's not even related to the silver value going up and down anyway. So yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up for today. It's it's been a long day for me. I've probably got like my eyes have got rings and everything. It's it's ridiculous, but. I'll finish it off with so, 30 dinar coin bar. Fantastic. Take care, people.